Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Brawl Masters Arena. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Allow me to make it even better as we're getting getting kicked off here. In the first match of the night, we have Lee Mei Nguyen going up against Gloria Garcia in a rematch after last Sunday's events and uh, already kicking it into the high gear as this competition is an extreme rules fight. No disqualifications, weapons allowed, plenty of weapons stored underneath the ring. Lee Mei, Lee Mei wanted, wanted a rematch but Gloria decided that she, she is tired of hearing from Lee Mei. Instead she wants to boot her to the ground and keep her there. Of course with the extreme rules stipulation meaning that the Cooper screw the rest of them. Captain Cooper and Outlaw Casey are barred from ringside. So so for now it, it's all up to these two. Uh, and maybe there's a third person gonna be involved as you have Isabella Garcia now coming up to the coming to the stage here and distracting Gloria momentarily on Lee May to get the crucifix hold going on here. We have one and a kick out. Yeah, well, whatever distraction and uh, whatever reason Isabella happened to come here, well, al allowing Lee May to get, get a momentary distraction on her side, but doesn't seem like she was able to utilize it for much. Drop down to the top turnbuckle there as Gloria keeping on with the control and oh she was actually serious about putting this problem to the rest a steel tear right now and smack right across the face there circling around and oh drops it right onto her I, I don't see, I don't see what, what, what's the reason to hesitate already going oh that's what she wanted planting the back right onto the steel tear Going for the cover now. We have one and kick out. Yeah, no, not enough an impact there. Gonna be require a lot more to to bring a conclusion to this frog plus Oh, meeting the knees, Lee May. Continue on the fight, continuing and try to get the situation cleared out. Try to get some payback. Ooh, there it is. The mushroom cave st cave in stomp. The mushroom stomp. Going for the cover now, Lee May, hoping to get a victory here, two and a kick out. Yeah, Lee May still fighting for her tag team partner, Alexia Regadotir, who was taken out, out, out of the fight, taken uh, uh, and is out of commission uh, uh, for, for the unforeseeable future after Gloria Garcia assaulted her in the backstage. Getting set up here, face buster into the cover. We have one, two count, and a kick out again. Lee May really pu putting a lot more effort tonight. Back elbow straight to the face. Picked up here. Kick to the midsection and locking up the wrist here. The two are do it are gonna go for a ride. And here they come. Beautiful arm track whip. Yeah, Lee May. Definitely look, looking more headstrong and more adamant than ever to, to uh, take it out of glory. A beautiful cross body into the press now. Two count and kick out again. Yeah, Gloria not looking looking so hot tonight. I, I don't know whether, whether or not she's... I don't know. She, she wanted to come into this match strong. She wanted to make sure that Lee May would, would be causing any more problems for her in the single uh, singles division but so far she's falling far behind of her back suplex drop oh keeps a hold waist lock German suplex not done yet it seems transitions it into a vertical suplex and now now let's go and now going to get back the steel chair that Lee may oh but Lee may one step ahead going around Takes down Gloria with a solid springboard action. Catching hold and looking to put the Garcia sister. Ooh, what a chop! Right to the crowd, setting up the knee here, and crossing it against the canvas. And yeah, both of these ladies are high flyers, so they definitely know how to take each other out. Oh, kick to the face there. Or at least they know what what is needs to be done. Salida del Sol will definitely do into the cover. Two count and no kick out right before our three count. Two point nine.
spin kick now Gloria Garcia setting up Salida de ah, Salida de so this was La Mosca Española into the cover two count and oh shoulder up again yeah the Spanish fly not not enough to put Lee May to the crowd or or at least put, put her to the rest but maybe the steel chair will be as she's now what is she she's hesitating for a moment no, she pl plans on putting it into the corner, but Lee May takes the opportunity. Face Buster into the cover. This may be it. Two count and three. Lee May securing a victory here. Gloria taking a bit too long. Uh, coming up with a plan and pace for it dearly. As now Lee May has evened out the depth. Alexia Dregado did it successfully. Successfully paid for. And vengeance is now Cooper's Cruise. Here is your winner, the Asian Nightmare. Win Lee May. Talk about an explosive opening to tonight's episode of the Pro Masters. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pro Masters Arena. We have, one, uh, as usual, we have one amazing show coming up to you. Coming, coming up right after this, we're gonna be getting a uh, mixed gender tag team match between the War Raiders, Wolf Anderson and Bert the Valkyrie, who are going up against Vicious and Delicious pair, Lady Christina and Lord Ben Fick. Then coming up later in the show, we have Sarabella Bailey, who wants another piece at Funky Little Lisa, apparently. Her surprise attack last Sunday did not pan out exactly how she wanted. I'm gonna be wanting an extreme rules fight with her tonight. Later on in the show, Martha Baker will be going up against a mystery brawler, someone who attacked her last Sunday. No, no idea who this person is, but they have agreed to a match, one on one match with Martha Baker. So we, we will know that about it, get some answers to some questions tonight. And coming up in the main event of tonight, we have Motorman Max going up against the Demon King Eraser. Demon King Eraser inviting Motorman Max into a Rated R Championship fight. So that's gonna be one interesting show coming to you from Helsinki, Finland. I am your host, Kupari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters. have a right back and everybody about to race all hell in the ring tonight the Viking warriors wolf and bird the following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring yes uh, 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 as you just heard, the War Raiders, Bird and Wolf, two two people looking to make a high impact here, as both of them are now getting thirsty for some real competition and looking for an opportunity to get potentially get into a championship fight. Both of them more than excited to go 
after the Rated R Championship in their respective divisions. Black Rose Julia and Demon King Eraser better, better be keeping a close eye on this match as these two are about to take this place with a storm. Well, the crowd is not definitely on, on the side of despair. And their opponents, vicious and delicious. Absolutely not, as Lord Fenwick and Lady Christina Van Morris make their way to the ring. And I, I, I don't think the duo ha has much love for for the audience I, I back at them. But. but Fortunately for them, in this series, you do not need the love of the audience. You only need to make if something happen in the ring. You you gotta make good impression. Uh, you gotta secure those victories, impress the crowd. I, like you can say whatever you want about Christina. You can say whatever you want about uh, Lord Fenwick. Truth is, they are both remarkable competitors and definitely have earned their place here in the Pro Masters. Right, the bell has rung and the men are ready to start off this mixed gender tag team 5 as Wolf is laying out a rush attack combination against Lord Fenwick. The draw elf sent outside as the Viking warrior looking very pleased at himself and for a good reason uh, after all makes the tag. I I'm really surprised that the referee was able to even see that but... Nonetheless, he did. DDT by Christina Van Morris, dropping down Bert the Valkyrie, drops down the elbow and goes for a cover via one and a kick out. Yeah, Christina hoping for a real early early conclusion to this match. And, and uh, well, uh, I cannot blame her. I, I, I cannot blame her after all. That would definitely be turning heads. Uh, and to get, get to that, potentially get to that Reddit R Championship title. You, you gotta be re ready to impress the champion. Or at least get a close for it. Open palm strikes. Wolf Anderson. Straight against Fenwick, who's definitely not... I don't think he was prepared for this match. At least so far, it doesn't seem like he was prepared to face off against such a fe fear, fearsome warrior. Fierce and fearsome. Lifting up. Pump handle locked up. Brings down. Ooh, what a driver. Wolf making another tag. Yeah, the War Raiders defi definitely showcase a good, good tag team spirit. Another DDD from Christina, though. And he's, she's gonna continue with another elbow into another cover. We already saw this. Yeah, the exact same combination. She's hoping, hoping to make something happen with that. DDD and elbow. That's... Wow, that's, uh, that, that's just iconic. She's gonna go for it again. The entire ring shaking as she drops down that elbow of hers. You can only imagine the power that she must be driving into that comes in from the top rope. The frog splash connecting. And with that makes the tag to Lord Fenwick. Bert the Valkyrie rolling out, leaving Wolf all by himself, who gets sent over the top rope and right to the feet of Christina, who doesn't go for the bite bite. Alright, Fenfic rolls out, and Christina there to support. No, she goes back to the April. Well, Fenfic keeping up at least with the control, some kicks. Another one, and brings the close line. Strikes continue as Wolf is unable to ma measure up any kind of comeback here. Oh no, not. Oh, face first onto the April, the hardest part of the ring. And now looking at both of the legs, we're going to be seeing a classic wrestling hold here. The Boston Crab submission hold applied, uh, stretching down the lower back, but Wolf overpowering Fenwick. We're up to a seven count. This can end up in a double count out at this rate. No, Wolf wants to finish this fair and square, sending Fenwick back inside and climbs to the ring himself, but gets caught immediately by the draw lord who was just waiting for him there. 
making the tag. Christina Van Mort is tagged in, meaning Bert the Valkyrie has to step inside as well, taking down Christina with a flying clothesline and now slides an elbow straight to the chest, giving Christina a taste of her own. Arsenal here drops down the knee right to the arm there and oh, scraping the boot against the yeah, you, you gotta wonder, you gotta wonder here, you know, uh, oh, wait a minute, the wing clipper, the wing clipper submission hold, a very powerful submission hold, stretching on the shoulders, and a solid lock up there, but Christina able to force her arms free and able to escape. Yeah, it's a well, well known, well, I, I, uh, vampires are known, known, known to be weak against holy power, right? So... Bird being, you know, a Valkyrie, she, she should carry the power of the gods of Asgard with her, or at least their representation. So you you would imagine that strikes from Bird would be real burning her up, uh, Christina up, you know. Solid neck breaker there, into the cover now. We have one, and Lord Fenwick there to get the referee's attention. Not sure Bird is happy about that center of the ring as Bird comes diving down with the elbow. Yeah, there's definitely some kind of competition now going on between Christina and Bird. Both both of them very powerful women, but Bird wants to prove herself to be the more powerful seated Senton taking down the vampire lady. And once again Bird is gonna fly. Third top rope maneuver in quick succession. She's putting high risk, but that's oh she did it takes down with a fist press instead. Yeah, that, that's just that Viking warrior ferocity kicking in. Her warrior instincts getting back to her. Wolf tacked in and Fenwick taking the opportunity, trapping him around the ropes and pulling on the leg, draped across the middle rope. Horrible strain there. Wolf getting control back. No, gets an elbow, uh, gets a fist to the face. Multiple fists, in fact, that stomp to the midsection, and utter one. As now Lord Fenwick setting up a classic Pro Masters hold here, the bow and arrow hold locked in. A very solid technical. Christina takes out Bird. Wolf goes for the cover, no, gets tossed off by Fenwick, who now locks him up, swinging neck breaker. Love to see that solid technique. One of my favorites, actually. Oh, Wolf coming around. Northern Lights not done yet. Rolls it through. And oh, gets punched into the guard. Not allowed to finish that combo off. Lord Fenwick now sending Wolf into the corner. And what is he? He's just staring at him. Oh, scraping the face now. With the elbow. Oh, come on. Referee allowing this. Going for stomps, going to choke, but Wolf, I think, oh, wasn't able to get the arms there to protect his throat, gets dropped down. Lifting up here, ooh, what a kick by Wolf, or what a knee lift by Wolf. Who's gonna be lining up, another Norfolk Lights. The Auroras are definitely lit up tonight, Wolf making the tag, Bird back in. And gets caught by Christina, who's gonna go for the midnight snack attack. Goes for the bite. And I'm not sure, earlier earlier on I said that, see, Bird is a holy holy warrior, so... I don't know, either her blood is gonna be extra tasty, or it has a thing. Well, maybe it's like uh, Mexican food, you know? Setting up here for the tombstone pile driver. Christina one more is crossing the arms and ready to go for the victory. We have one. We have two count and shoulder up, really forcing it with power there. Well, Christina has been rejuvenated. She's more dangerous than ever. And Bird falling very far behind now in the competition. Tacked in Lord Fenwick and takes down Wolf immediately with a close line. Picking him up. Oh, the acid mist now into a kick to uh, kick to the boot. And now very interesting pin here. Oh, what was that? Goes for the uses the middle ropes. Yeah, that was a very interesting pin pinning technique there. 
Almost like an illusion magic, really. Tagged in Christina Van Mordis, but Bertie Valkyrie is still on the outside. Christina trying to go after Wolf, but he escapes. No, doesn't escape far enough. Sent outside with a slingshot neck breaker. On the ring side now, Christina. Wanting to take the fight to the outside of the ring and leave. look at this power dropping down this vertical suplex. Yeah, caught hold here and oh, Wolf looked like he was uh, he was ready to attack. Unfortunately, due to the corporate rulings, you know, not the parole master's ruling, but uh, that thanks to the rule rule set uh, set by the corporate uh, the corporate co governing. And allowing the production of the parole masters, the men are un un uh, uh, not allowed to attack female brawlers. Even though that's complete bullshit, we all know that the female are women are just as good fighters as the men, if not even better. After all, we have such legends in the women's roster. We're talking about Magic Maggie, Selena Bowchamp, Kathy Gardner, Snow Princess Yuri. All of them could they uh, seriously they could be fighting in the men's division and. Uh, really, really, I, I believe that Maggie would honestly still be the Grand Prix champion. Bird able to take down Christina. Coming, coming around. And try to set her up into the corner here. Chop across the chest there. And now pulling on the arm. So, so it wear down another chop, yet another one. Christina falls down and Bird uses that. Aliu power bomb. Christina taken down and Wolf tacked in. The War Raiders in a very good position. Oh, Christina is back up. Yeah. And Wolf has been sent outside. Yeah, that did not. Wolf unable to capitalize on the situation. And Fenwick very mockingly telling him to get back into the ring. And then rolls out of himself. Gets caught by Wolf, though. Double underhook. Into a butterfly suplex, not done yet. Rolls it through another butterfly suplex. And a third. No, not quite, but at least a face buster. Looking up. Ooh, what a strong knee to the midsection there. Looking up the legs here. What is he doing? Oh, what a nasty pull. That's gonna be breaking the back. Up to a five count now. Oh, lifted up. Solid lift up there. Up to a seven count, Wolf tossing Fenwick off and climbs back inside the ring by himself. No, rushes out, breaking the count. Oh, Fenwick takes the knee out and now spikes a DDT. Holding head and sending Wolf back inside the ring. Lord Fenwick definitely looking ready to finish this one off. Locks up. What is he doing? Oh, the guillotine! Locking up the guillotine hold, there it is! A very horrible submission hold as he's wrapping his entire body around Wolf. Bert the Valkyrie coming to save Wolf from the fall or getting knocked out. Oh, keeping up with the choking though. No respect whatsoever. Pinning in the center of the ring, but Bert ready there to break it up immediately. Yeah, talk about teamwork right there. I talk about the referee not being able to control the situation. Attack has been made by Lord Fenwick. Christina Van Mordis. Oh, but Bird sidestepping. Kick to the midsection. High kick to the face. And stunning combination of attacks. Sitting Christina up against the ropes here. Lining up an elbow to the back. Another one. Christina falls down. And yeah, Bird was just fired up. She's firing up that Viking fury of hers. The rage, the uh, burning rage inside her as she's taking Christina down, goes for the cover. Here we go for the one and a kick out. Well, that was a beautiful, very beautiful comeback return, but unfortunately not enough to take down Christina. Sandy, who now just overpowers Bird and sends her flying across the ring. Heavy punches. And taking a bit, a bit of adoration from the fans there, but taking a bit too long as Bird is back in action and back with her fury of attacks, Hurricane Rana. 
climb into the top rope here. Bert the Valkyrie looking for one finishing maneuver. The divine strike incoming as four strikes his hammer into the cover now. And Lord Fenwick there to run interference immediately. Wolf takes him down with a kitchen sink. And Bert gonna be rushing, rushing and climbing back to the top rope. Looking to finish this off once more time. Frog Splash getting the knees. Christina Van Mordis back on top. Looking to finish Bird off now with an opportunity given. I don't know where Wolf went. Kick to the midsection. Oh, Wolf is taking care of Fenwick on the ringside. I see now. Keeping off with the attack, but that doesn't help. Uh, Bird inside the ring who's now getting hip attacked. Yeah, the. This game being pulled apart here, piece by piece. Lifted up, military pressing. You can only imagine the power it requires, but Christina is packed with it. Wait for a strike, another one. Lifted up, and I breeze is setting up. Yeah, the tombstone pile driver. One more time. Rest in peace. And Wolf there accidentally accidentally kicking Christina Van Morris to the face there who remained completely unfazed as you can see. She's very happy about the situation. She knew exactly what she was doing. Referee calling it. I call that bullshit. I call that very unfair to the situation and not, not not exactly how professional wrestling should be going, but hey. Referee called it, so there's nothing I can do about it. I, I suppose this match goes to to the very happy, very satisfied Christina Van Mortis and Lord Van Victen. Uh, all, that, all that remains for us is to move on and move on with our lives and get on to the next match. The fourth match of the night is a fatal four-way ladder match, and this is a number one contender fight for the men's internet championship going up against Jackie Jackson next Sunday, one of these men. Is it gonna be Big Ham, Hammond Nelson, the hero, Flyboy, Carl the Jarl, or Shade Lord Satoru? immense opportunity tonight for Big Ham Hammond Nelson who's gonna be try definitely gonna be doing his best in this upcoming ladder match number one contender spot available for the men's internet championship as I I, I, I heard some rump grumbling from the backstage from both on Teresa and Jackie Jackson that the internet championship is not getting the attention it deserves so the the board has made a new ruling that the championship will be defended in every, every episode of the Brawl Masters, alternating with the women's and the men's. Otteris are going to be fighting later on tonight in a Fatal 5 May match. But now we're going to be fi figuring out a number one contender for the men's fight next Sunday. And his opponents. Representing the Alliance from the fifth dimension. Weighing in at 169 pounds. Spectacular Flyboy. 
the majestic fly and the majestic, majestic hero. I suppose you could call him as well. This high flying genius and a uh, re real just a uh, re real uh, uh, respect to the or giving a respect to classical superheroes. Of course, him winning the Internet Championship would be just gold, and that would mean a lot of exposure for him. But again, it means a whole lot of exposure to anyone taking Eight. part in this fight. From Copenhagen, Denmark, weighing in at 271 pounds, Carl the King! Carl, they are, of course, just as eager to uh, they, they get the opportunity, get to the number one contender spot, get to that internet championship fight and prove himself to be a worthy champion uh, uh, and uh, someone who is actually wearing a championship belt around his waist. Man standing ever proud and tall. If there was a championship belt made for him, it would be this one. The man himself knows why would why would he be wanting to go after this title? Why would he want the internet championship? Not about it to spread his maniacal maliciousness across the world wide web. Even though that's not exactly how the title works, but hey, it's it's free exposure for him. After all, what better way to get uh, gain yourself followers than to be? Loud and obnoxious on the internet. Definitely on the more more on the side of obnoxious. And here we go. Fight is on. Fatal four-way ladder match. No pinfalls. No submissions. No disqualifications. No knockouts. Only way to win this match is by grabbing hold of the briefcase. Which holds the number one uh, position contract, number one contender contract inside, allowing them to challenge the current reigning champion Jackie Jackson next Sunday. Do note that do note that the, this contract expires on Sunday, so uh, unless the winner of this match ca cashes it in, then they are forfeiting that op opportunity, and instead it will be a free for all fight for the championship title. So. This is all about securing your position. Well, a drop kick there, but unfortunately not hitting any of the flyboy. Now uh, being caught in the corner by Big Ham Hammond Nelson, one of our more uh, most ico iconic brawlers, a season one veteran, the only season one veteran actually in the ring right now. Flyboy and Carly Earl joining us on season two, and Satoru joining on this uh, third season. So far, uh, Big Ham has been able to dictate the pacing of the fight, but gets sent outside by Carla Jarl, who now get be, is being sent into the corner by Satoru, grabbing hold of the ladder and... Oh no, don't do it! Oh, no, he's not. He's actually not. He, he has a... Oh no, I have a poor planning of... of the Carla Jarl, fortunately enough, able to fight it, for I, I feared that... He could have, could have gone for a suplex or some kind of a drop, dropping down Carl straight to the ladder. Yeah, something like that. Carl, they are rolling outside. Satoru going up against Flyboy now. The hero versus Willan. Snapmare straight to the ladder and now a dropkick. 
Yeah, Satoru really just paying off with that, that poor ladder positioning. Big Cam trying to go, go around, but gets caught midway by Flyboy setting up a DDT. And Fly, Flyboy just really taking it out tonight. Yeah, he's, he's on fire. He wants to showcase why, why he's a superhero. Then again, I don't, I don't know if he's actually a superhero. Well, uh, what's the classification to be a superhero? Do you specifically need to have superpowers? I mean, I don't, I don't know if Flyboy has, and at least he hasn't been showcasing any of those, un unless you count uh, count the. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, he's a half man, half fly, but that alone doesn't account for a superpower, does it? I mean, I suppose in a sense that it's amazing that he's still alive. But I don't know how, how things work in the fifth dimension. Satoru, if the ladder no drops it down for some reason. What is he planning? Oh, he's planning to go for the Cobra Clutch. Locks up the snake hold right across the face of Big Ham Hammond Nelson. Of course, he's not going to be, I mean, tapping out. He could be. But there, there's no victory in that. that. That is about causing damage and nothing else. Satoru being sent against the ropes. But Big Ham taken down by Flyboy before he had the time to act. Flyboy all gets kicked down as he was trying to climb up the ladder. Setting up your hamstring crusher. Get a boot to the uh, underside of the leg there and now just locking up a heel hook. Definitely the right way to go about when you want to neutralize a high flyer. Take out the legs. Carly Jarl now lining up. Elbow to the back against Big Ham. Another one comes crashing down. And ha oh, what a beautiful shooting star there. It's amazing that Carly Jarl is able to... Uh, do such kind of a maneuver, such an acrobatic maneuver. The man is all muscle, or rolls through sunset flip, but yeah, there are no pinfalls here, so try, try to keep the hold of that would have accomplished absolutely nothing. Satoru, the first one to actually make the climb and reach to the briefcase. He doesn't need to do any, anything other than to grab it and uh, uh, yeah, unhook it and secure, secure it. The moment it comes unhooked is the moment Well, you need to grab it in your hands, you have to... I don't know actually what would happen if the briefcase would drop to the ground, like... Would that still secure a victory? I mean, that has never happened in the Pro Masters, but... I'm speculating, and Big Ham is about to drop! The big drop! Extra large packets for you! Satoru is down! I think for a good reason, that, that must have pushed out all the air out of his lungs. Oh, but here's Flyboy Sleeper Slam from behind, taking down Big Cam. Setting up to the apron and trying to get the crowd to his side. Meanwhile, Satoru setting up Cobra Clutch again into a backstabber. Yeah, that's his, that's his one talent, the ability to backstab. Well, what a courageous and what a, what a great ability. Flyboy about to give him a piece of his mind. Se uh, setting him up against the rope here. Kick to the leg. And now lining up here. Beautiful spin springboard kick. Satoru trying to roll to safety. And Flyboy celebrating his victory. Poor timing though as he gets caught. And dropped down face first onto the turnbuckle. Flyboy sent into the corner and Big Ham there to continue, but yeah, getting attacked from both ends. Flyboy and Satoru do, did not appreciate the distraction, smacking the ladder against the back and trying to drop someone down, really just smacking the ladder to whoever is there to catch it. Big Ham was there and now, what is called, they are slamming, power slamming Satoru down. Could have slammed him on the ladder, but hey, what do I know? Need to the face there, call the Earl now taking the situation under his control, lifting up. Lawn darting him, or rather snake eyeing Flyboy. Onto the top turnbuckle. Stiff punch from Satoru, another one kick to the midsection. Another snake hold into the backstabber. Looking up. Another Cobra clutch here, this time for the purpose of submission, but big hand there. To immediately break it off. I don't know why. I, I don't know why would he do that. After all, 
if your opponents are worn out, that means that you are able to... Uh, you have an easier time securing the briefcase for yourself. It's all about the briefcase. Of course, temporary alliances, and I know that about it, that will buy Big Ham some goodwill along the line, whether or not it's for this match or any future. Oh! Call the Altos German suplexing Satoru right onto the ladder and dropping the leg also. Almost like a guillotine right there. Decapping, almost decapitating the head as it gets caught between the flesh, the hard flesh, uh, and the ladder. Even harder ladder. Cardial stepping outside. He's trying to do something with the ladder, I don't know. Ah, he gives up on it. Lifting up Satoru now. Big Ham wanting some action, getting himself pumped up here. Satoru dropped out of the turnbuckle. And Big Ham there to kick him off and... I don't know what Carly Arl is doing. Oh, there we go. Finally deciding to go after the ladder. Sending it inside the ring now. Big Ham looking for a big opportunity. Double axe handle. Hits absolutely nothing. Looking up Satoru. Flyboy catching hold of the ladder, smacking it to Satoru first, one take it. And yeah, these men are just interesting in beating it utter up at this point. And I gotta blame them. A good amount of damage has been dealt all the way around. Oh no! Face first onto the ladder. Flyboy. Does it drop? Does it do anything with the ladder instead? Or maybe he set it up. Spin kick! I think that he hurt himself more with that than his intended target. Power slam from a scoop and a slam from Big Ham. Who gets now taken down. Oh, and Satoru able to avoid Flyboy just in time. Rushes out of the harm's way. I don't know what the man is doing. Oh, getting, getting hold of the ladder. Flyboy gets caught and sent outside with a shoulder thrust. Big Cam also rolling to the outside. Meanwhile, Satoru, the only man left inside the ring, sets up the ladder again in the center of the ring in a perfect position. And now goes for the briefcase. Both the hooks have been undone, so it's only a matter of getting the rest seven, seven rest. Big Cam collapses the ladder underneath. Sent in the corner, shoulder tackle, another one. Flyboy catching it. Satoru and drops him down with an electric chair. Satoru rolls out of the ring. And Flyboy gets caught with a haymaker. Oh, face full of steel with that ladder. Straight to the face there. Carly Arl setting up the ladder back into its position. And now gets a hold of Big Ham. Hammond Nelson lining up a regal power bomb. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely shut down the big ham. Now Carl the the only man left standing, goes for it. No, does it go for the briefcase? Gonna be topping down. Comes in heavy with the splash from the heavens themselves. I'm well, pretty sure that that knocks out big ham for a good long while. And now Carl Yarl, well, he was free to do this before, but now fumbling around with the hooks there. Satoru trying to collapse the ladder. There he goes. And... Oh, power bomb lands him straight onto the collapsed ladder. And that'll, that'll break anyone's back. Speaking of breaking backs, Satoru just broke the back of Big Ham there with the backstabber. Flyboy able to avoid damage there and rolls through. Arringer takedown. Lining up Snapmare now. And oh, kick there from Carly Arrow back in the ring. Big Ham seems like he's back back on top of things. Oh, ladder to the face of Carly Arl there. Definitely gonna be stinging for, for a good while. As both Big Ham and Flyboy. Oh, and now it's just gone full out of control. The brawl escalating exceedingly lines up. Power slam, a side slam. And Flyboy with a shooting star straight to Satoru. Absolutely chaotic as these men continue to break each other down. Flyboy now on the top of the ladder and now 
ready to get set the briefcase free. He has undone one hook, but he needs to do the rest of the Satoru Luki to collapse the ladder. There he goes. Flyboy gets caught. Electric chair drop. Planting him down, and he's going to be rolling out. Satoru following in pursuit. Oh, he is lining up something big here. He's going to go hamstring crusher. We will call their all uncontested. Makes the climb again to the top. Yeah, fumbling around. He keeps fumbling. I don't. I. I don't think he. Uh, he has nimble fingers here. At least not nimble enough. Oh, again planted with a power bomb straight to the ladder. You can imagine how much that hurts. I'm imagining it, and it's definitely not 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 nice. Drop kick from Flyboy against Big Ham. As he's trying to reposition the ladder, but Satoru there to catch him off guard. As the duo, duo are now tag teaming him, or at least both of them two on one against Flyboy. Big Ham setting up the ladder, still still off the target. I don't think you can reach the briefcase from there. Flyboy. Oh, beautiful R reversal. Be beautiful surprise there. And another ro rolling through Flyboy. Able to get land on his feet there from that German. Satoru and Big Ham climbing to the top of the ladder. They're gonna be having a one on one fight there up on the top. And Big Ham looking to. Oh no. Don't do it. From the top. Oh no. A Big Ham sending both Satoru and himself to the outside. With a suplex. Well, the crowd is loving it, but I, I think that well, Satoru is going to be down for a long while. I'm ama actually amazed that Big Ham was able to get back up to his feet so fast. Now with a submission hold, a single like Camo Clutch. Meanwhile, Flyboy waiting for something. I don't know what he's... Oh, there he goes. Climbing to the top and... Yeah, he's taking a momentary pause. I don't know whether, whether what what is going on with him. Comes in with the splash from the top of the ladder. Yeah, no no hits are being spared here. Big Ham makes his way back up to the top. Goes for the briefcase. But better watch out, Carl the Yarl there. Trying to push the ladder. No, he doesn't have enough strength left. Here comes Flyboy collapsing the ladder with a springboard and a power bomb to follow by Satoru. Beautiful slam, a beautiful drop, and now a moonsault from Satoru. Yeah, talk about a high flower being taken out with a move like that. Carl the Jarl sliding up a regal power bomb once again. Picks up Satoru and lines up Norfolk Lights right onto the ladder, not done yet, rolls it through. Into a suplex again, straight onto the ladder. I believe everyone is knocked out after that. No, he wants to keep on dealing more punishment. Or not? I don't know what is he doing. He's wasting time right now. Big ham back inside the ring now. Things have calmed down a bit, and for a good reason. Everyone just ate up a huge amount of damage after one another. A big cam about to deal a whole lot more. The drop. Call the arrow sent into the corner. And so is Flyboy on the ringside and lining up here. An inverted Alabama slam. Face first onto the canvas. Sending Carl again into the corner. Rolls him down and trying to position him in. Oh, he's gonna drop it down again, huh? Satoru meanwhile setting the ladder up. Oh, and there it goes. Heavy drop right there, but not done yet. Flyboy with a basement drop. He kicks, gets caught. Satoru able to make a reversal and I'm gonna be going for, for a moonsault. Big hand sent into the corner by Carl the Jarl. And he, yeah, the opportunity he was looking for, the oh, straight face full of, and another one. Carl Jarl now ma making his ascent to the top, reaching for the briefcase again. One of the more more proactive characters to go for the briefcase. Satoru now looking for a big maneuver as well, lines up, suplex, 
not enough to send either of them outside, but still, you can imagine how much that hurts. Be sent from the top of the ladder with a suplex down onto the ring canvas. It's good for absorbing attacks, but believe me, that thing is not soft. Satoru climbing all the way to the top and dives down. Well, he did land on Carl they are, but he didn't seem to mind it one bit. Gets back up to his feet real quick. Setting up, no, gets countered. Or rather, Flyboy coming in to run interference. Meanwhile, Big Cam trying to get the briefcase. Carl they are once again trying to topple the ladder, but no, he still doesn't have enough strength there. Instead, gonna be trying an old fashioned method and go, goes after the legs. There goes Big Cam dropping down with heavy impact. Carl they are, meanwhile. Beautiful shooting star and oh the ladder almost collapsing on top of the another shooting star. Yeah, th this is going this is going real wild. And another one oh well that was a moonsault and that's a shooting star. Yeah, just constantly laying it out. Absolutely amazing as he's lining up here. A very powerful regal bomb. And another shooting star. Yeah, the sky is full of, oh, sky is full of moon salts and shooting stars, but uh, now they all got taken down with a hurricane runner to the ladder. Satoru, I don't know what he's, what he still is. Oh, misses with the Kopo kick. Kopau kick, how do you pronounce that? DDT, oh, Satoru picking up the ladder right before Flyboy, Flyboy was able to utilize it. Oh, they are back on top. Yeah, he's he has incredible endurance as he's lining up once again a regal bomb. This is no time to be wasting. This should be the time to go after the briefcase. Everyone else is out. No, he's gonna pick up fight with Satoru once again. I'm gonna be surprised if any uh, any one of these men will be clearing out the next physical. Speaking of uh, physical test, test we had. An update concerning uh, Mr. Ace and Coach Leo's fight on Sunday, the unsanctioned fight. Uh, uh, Coach Leo has been issued issued a temporary match ban here. Satoru lining up here. Another Cobra Clutch against Big Ham. Yeah, he's gonna be tapping out. You can see he taps out. Satoru being gentlemanly enough to let him go at that point. Yeah, Coach Leo is barred from fighting in the Pro Masters and in any other promotions. Uh, due to his unsportsmanship behavior and then we had what is flyboy doing oh no drops down yeah mr ace has been suspended from fighting due to an undisclosed head injury yeah, this is just for the sake of allowing him to fully recover and, and prevent any further damage to the head area so yeah and I fear that uh, no matter what the outcome is for the uh, fight tonight, so someone is going to be dropping out of the competition for a good while. Lining up here, German suplex again. And one more time for good measure, triple German suplex. And now lining up, one more strike to the back, a regal power bomb again. Yeah, these men, I don't know, I don't know what is it with me, these men, they have just, they have tunnel vision for one another, that's what's going on, they're more interested in causing as much damage, well, Cardinal so far has been the most proactive going after the briefcase, no, he's gonna climb to the top, Big Cam trying to collapse the ladder, he succeeds dropping down Cardinal, I suppose that that's a testament that he still has more power than the Yarl left in him, speaking of power, trying to deadlift him, but Flyboy there to prevent it. Satoru waiting. Oh, waiting for the opportunity to strike. But Big big Ham was all too ready for him. Yeah, we've been going for around 20 minutes now into this match. And these men are still fighting on. I do not know how they have the strength, the resolve. I mean, we are still talking about internet championship. That isn't the most prestigious of the titles. So, you know, I mean, a championship win is a championship win and all. But still. Is it worth it this much? 
I mean, at this point, I, uh, I mean, I don't know. All these men wanted it, wanted that title opportunity, so you know. Had this been a submission fight or a pinfall fight, we would already have a winner, even if it was elimination rules. Flyboy lifted up here by Big Cam, military press here. No, gets countered, Flyboy with sunset flip. And once again, the quartet of people just going after one another, no, no, ca not caring one bit. I mean, everyone is showing amazing resiliency tonight. No one, and I am, I do mean no one, is uh, showing any willingness to drop out of the competition. No one is showing any kinds of wear. At least right now. Flyboy with the ladder takes on Carl the Jarl, but does it proceed to put up the ladder? Snapmare takedown to Satoru. Right onto that ladder. And the ladder is now flying in the center of the ring. At least momentarily. Carl the Jarl picking up the ladder here. Oh, Big Ham about to drop down once again, but Carl the Jarl prevented that instead sets up the ladder and now going after Flyboy, stunning him against the ropes. This is a perfect opportunity. All alone, Carl the Jarl now goes for the briefcase. This is the moment. He has to hurry up, though. Flyboy is back. So I've taken him out of the ring. Carl the Jarl dropped down by Flyboy. Oh, but gets taken down. Is it? Maybe it could be. Maybe it could be that Carl, Carl the Jarl is the only one left. Who actually understands what the stipulation for this match is, what is required for victory. Everyone else seems to have forgotten that. No one else has even made a move to the uh, briefcase. Satoru coming in, locks up the hold, backstabber. The flyboy now climbing to the top and now reaching for the briefcase. He needs to unhook the remaining five hooks. Satoru running interference for against Big Ham. And Flyboy all alone, he's gonna get it, he's gonna get the number one contender position contract, he has it. Ring the bell, Satoru chose to go after Big Cav instead of, instead of preventing Flyboy from getting th uh, that position. That was a real interesting tactical choice there that did not come to pay off, at least not in this match, at least not for a championship opportunity. But nonetheless, Flyboy taking the opportunity and now taking the briefcase. With that, we already have one of our matches set to go for Sunday. Flyboy is gonna go up against the Queen Jackie Jackson for the men's internet championship title. But we got a whole lot of other matches waiting to get started tonight, so let's get on with the next match. Stepping into the ring next, we have 101 Extreme Rules fight, Sarabella Bailey and Funky Little Lisa. Let's see whether or not this time Sarabella can actually hold herself down and wait for the actual match to start. We will see and find out soon enough. situation that started out last week during Sarah Bella's match between her and Victoria Sokolova. Funky little Lisa would go into the backstage and activate a stage routine for Selena Bochamp which greatly infuriated and distracted Sarah Bella during her match which 
eventually led to her losing the match. Last Sunday, Sarabella was scheduled to go for a fight with, uh, with her and Li Lisa involved, but before the ma match could even start, she tried to attack Lisa from behind. Lisa, however, was able to thwart that attempt and drop down Sarabella before any serious harm was done. Sarabella wanting another a rematch tonight and this time promising herself to cool off at least for long enough for the match to actually start. Not only the clown, but I'm really now dressed up as a director, as she's certainly directing the, uh, this little tale along, according to her own lies, and definitely laughing all the way after all. Getting underneath the skin of Sa uh, Sarah's Bella and getting all these reactions out of her, it's been one hilarious trip for funky little Lisa, who hopes to do exactly that. She's, she has successfully provoked Sarah Bella into a fight, and now she hopes to make a total clown out of her. I mean, not, not a clown, I mean, Lisa is the one and only clown here, but, you know, a fool out of her. Bella swung and the extreme fight is on. No, uh, pinfall or submission, no disqualification, no count outs, weapons allowed. And flatliner there from Lisa starting off the match, real nice and a uh, good way for her. Coming in with the splash. As Sarah Bella ends up e eating up a good amount of damage. Beautiful springboard moonsault. Once again, Lisa is full on, full on taking command of the match here. Yeah, talk about a director here. Drops the elbow to the, the top of the head there. Picking up Sarah back up to her feet and now sending her all, all the way outside. Crashes hard. Yeah, talk about disrespect right there. Sarah Bella definitely. Yeah, she was the one who wanted this match, but she's now get, getting getting completely torn up here. Well, it's just starting. Oh, there she goes, able to make a counter, but missing the kick as Lisa is able to hold her guard up, missing that one as well. Yeah, she's she's not on top of her game game tonight, and I I, I suppose a side uh, spinning slam there from Lisa, who's uh, giving the disrespect. Yeah. Lisa, although she's been, she's been mostly up, uh, in, in the background doing her own thing, but you cannot discount her. She is a season one veteran, uh, right at the day one, uh, day one competitor. Beautiful slide there from Sarabella, who's able to drop down Lisa, f looking for a weapon, but gets scored. Hair whips, uh, hair pull, match slam from the clown who's now circling around her opponent. I don't know what she's planning to do here. Gets back is at the ring. Oh, and once again calling her a loser right in front of everyone. Yeah, that's that's gonna be riling up the Sarah Bull, uh, Sarah Be Bell. I definitely did it say Bull right there. You didn't see here anything. Once again looking for a weapon as Lisa Braces herself for what's to come. The sledgehammer is driven straight to the midsection, dropping it down to the arm. Oh, and another one. Yeah, she is mad as hell. Not showing any mercy whatsoever here. Intent on causing as much pain as possible, but a simple kick makes her drop it. Counters with a kick of her own. Kick to the midsection, and now multiple kicks to the face, and a hair whip toss. Yeah. You do not definitely do not want to get on the bad side of Sarah Bella. Is the lesson of the story here for the cover now? Only a one count, despite all that, she's only able to get a one count. That says a lot about a lot about her striking ability, but also a lot about the endurance of fucking little Lisa. Slap to the face there, and now brings around the chain link clothesline, center of the ring cover. We have one, we have two, and a kick out again. Sarah Bellard way too hastily hoping for an end to this match. We're going to finish Lisa off here though. One big maneuver going to be doing it, but Lisa avoids it. Kick to the leg. And Lisa now getting the hold of the situation, sending Sarah Bella in the corner. Comes with a kick to the face. And we all know what that means. She's going to go for it once. 
He's gonna go for it twice. And once more, shooting to the top. He's gonna go for it twice. The triple moonsault into the cover now. We have one, we have two, and shoulder up. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely keep up the pressure, but this is no doubt to be letting up. Lisa definitely has to get, get the momentum going back on her side if she's hoping to get a victory here. Drops the sledgehammer right to the arm. Another one. Trying to dismember it entirely. Sharbella rolling through and able to get back up to her feet. Kick to the face. Another one. Sarabella takes out the knee. Mounting Lisa going for punches. Oh, and stomp to the torso as well, picking up the clown here who counters and drops down the crawler here. Climbing to the top and comes with Twisted Splash. Twisted lot of fun, that one is going for the cover. We have one, we have two, and a kick out again by Sarabella. At this time, Lisa feeling a bit down about it, or at least looks like she was uh, uh, disappointed with that, but you, you can never be sure after all, clones are masterful performers, so whatever emotions he seems to be uh, carrying out, you, you gotta wonder if that's true. Kick to the face there again, and she's gonna be lining up once again with the triple moonsault. Count with me, we have one, we have two, and one more time. We have a three. Hooks up the leg and try to get the victory going. Two count and a kick three. Yeah, funky little Lisa definitely making Sarabella the fool tonight. That was, a, that was a real quick match anyway. So the replays of the action here, Sarabella definitely... I don't know, she was fighting real reserved like. And that definitely costed her the match. Lisa didn't come to play around, she came to deal with business, she came, she saw, she defeated, and now she gets to stand tall. Here is your winner, Funky Little Lisa! A solid victory for Lisa tonight. We'll have to wait and see whether or not this situation will continue developing from here. But for now, at least Lisa gets to enjoy a solid victory and a good lap on her side. Coming to the halfway point of the show, we're gonna be having a one on one fight between the season one veteran Tiger Taylor going up against the masked samurai Katsuyori Elizabeth. Tiger Taylor, the solitary warrior, always standing tall and proud. And for a good reason, she has a plenty of good reason to be standing proud after all. She is one of the toughest as the women contenders come. Making a remarkable mark by herself during the second and third seasons. And now, continue on with her own warpath to dominance, to glory, and potentially maybe to the Grand Prix title. Always hungry and thirsty for a fight, she knows exactly that she's where she belongs. Right in the center of the axe and right here. I'm gonna be going up against the toughest as they come. Accompanied by 
Snow, Princess Yuri. From the land of the rising sun, the samurai, Katsuyori Elizabeth. And it seems that once more, Snow Princess Yuri is turning on the ringside for this one. As Katsuyori Elizabeth set to go up against yet another opponent. And this time a season one veteran at that. Let's see whether or not y Yuri actually being there. Yuri's coaching is gonna be giving her the edge she needs to take, take down this warrior princess. Yeah, but I suppose it's fair to say at this point that it's official that the two have some kind of an alliance here or... Uh, I don't know yeah. what, what, what it is exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get a word in as soon as possible. But you can assume oh, Tiger Taylor already going for the pin. Oh, getting, well, almost getting a two count out of that one. I, I believe that Elizabeth was fully ca caught on by surprise by that one. Looking up here. Solid suplex. Setting up here. Ooh, what a strike. Another one. Tiger Taylor set up against the ropes. Completely helpless as Elizabeth now pulling on the leg. Draped across the middle rope. A, a, bit, of, a bit of sore spot there. Oh, but able to make a recovery and getting a bit of momentum here. Lines up. Beautiful slam there. Turning all that momentum into a power slam. Tiger Taylor definitely knowing how to utilize the situation to her fullest as she's lifting up. Elizabeth in a deadlift military press. Look at that incredible strength there, ladies and gentlemen. That's nothing shy of training and working out and getting the results. Oh, and just sending Elizabeth around. And now with the opportunity, it's going to be locking up. The Cobra Clutch Mission Hold here, draping the arm across the neck and squeezing on, squeezing around the head, but no, not enough, not enough at this point, not enough damage has been done to secure any kind of headway with that. Elizabeth sending Tiger Taylor over the top rope, but she's fighting her way back inside into the ring, gets caught with a German suplex. And Elizabeth now looking for a big finishing maneuver here, it seems like. Say, warming up her hand and... Oh, misses the job, but gets that one. Oh, but Taylor retaliating with a job of her own. Lifting up military press again. Into a power slam. Yeah, if you want to get overpowered, definitely book a match with Tiger Taylor in it. She, she is not going to be holding anything back. And why should she? Gonna be lining up here, locks up both of the arms. Beautiful clam slams, shreds. Stomp right onto the arm as Tiger Taylor now setting up. Looks up a leg and locks up the uh, face as well. STF Camel Clots. Oh, but Elizabeth, oh, able to whip Taylor off and drop her down. Oh, missing with the boot. Going for, oh, straight to the face there. So it's kick. Stop to the face as Tiger Taylor now. Be lined up. Oh, what a chop. What a karate chop. Straight to the top of the head. That's definitely not her usual one. Going for the cover. Two count. And kick out. Yeah, definitely not her usual chop. Usually she goes for a body, but that was on the top of the head. I think she might have picked up something from Snow Princess Yuri. Maybe. Just maybe lifting up. The trump card locked in. The grief for a driver locked in. Try to get a chokehold. Or try to lock in the chokehold completely. Try to get a submission or a, uh, or potentially a knockout. Oh, but able to roll to the side. And with that, elbows to the side and to the face. Tiger Taylor back back, back up, up to her feet. Uh, back in this fight. Lifting up. Lines up. Backbreaker. Yeah, that armor. Armor. It might be giving some protection, but it definitely won't be absorbing too many attacks. Elizabeth climbing to the top rope, comes in diving with the elbow. I didn't know samurais could be fly. I mean, I suppose they can. Some of them can. We have one, we have two, and a kick out again. 
Tiger Taylor so close to falling out of this competition, but still holding strong. Jawbreaker there, allowing Tiger Taylor to turn things around. Takes down Elizabeth with a close line. Picked up here, rolls around, and Tiger suplex. Reaches the pin, we have one, we have two. Very beautiful bridge, but unfortunately for her, not enough to secure a victory. She's getting closer and closer, and she's definitely keeping this fight very lively as she's refusing to fall second. And exactly the kind of mentality you need to have kick to the mid uh, knee to the mid section. It's easier to say kick than a knee, you know. Sending uh, uh, Tiger Taylor outside. I think she landed her head right under the steel steps as well. Referee starting to count, but Elizabeth not done with her yet. Picks her up and now sends her back inside the ring. And gets some admiration of the fans to go with that. Tiger Taylor trying to rush in, but Elizabeth gets inside. Oh, gets caught. Power slam. Center of the ring. Shoulders are down. We have one. We have two. And no, shoulder is up. Katsuyori Elizabeth still holding strong, or at least momentarily holding strong. Locked up, another clam slam, I believe. Yes, locked in. A clam stretch, I mean. Kick to the back. Being picked up here. And now lining up. Lifted into a suplex carry, drives down. Gets the leg and goes for the cover. Two count. Oh, and only a two count. Again, shoulder is up. Katsuyori Elizabeth not about, not about to give up just yet. Lifted up, dead lifted. Military press. Incredible strength here. And drops her down. And leg drop to follow that up. And I get straight at the collarbone with that. Yeah, the samurai is not looking too hot right now. Well, then again, she has that ice. Ice themed armor around her, so I don't think if she looks uh, hot, that hot to begin with, but you know, taking a spin here and now challenging Elizabeth to come at her. And oh boy, she's about to retaliate. Oh, gets caught! Oh, just luring her straight for that attack. Trying to get hold, but oh, Elizabeth able to get the elbows and try gets the separation going here. Locks up the head here, lift off, and slams her down. Climbing to the top rope now, Katsuyori Elizabeth. Looking for an opportunity, I'm looking for an opportunity to finish the fight here. Comes in missing. I know what she was attempting, but definitely not worth it. Back suplex drop. Into the cover now. Here we go, one, and kick out. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Tiger Taylor kicking out at one. At this point in the match, Elizabeth needs to kick in a serious overdrive here. As she's gonna be lining up her trump card once again. The Kiri Fuda driver fully locked in. And this time, oh, putting in as much pressure as possible. Tiger Taylor taps out. Despite all the odds, despite all the damage that she ended up eating during that match. Katsuyori Elizabeth picks up a victory here tonight. Let's watch some of the replays here. Yeah, there we had. Yeah, Yuri celebrating full on with that karate chop to the head. See, she, she knows that she has her mark of approval. Tiger Taylor coming in heavy and strong. But it was not enough. It was just not enough to take down the masked samurai tonight. Any other night, any other opponent, this would have been a clear match. A clear victory for Tiger Taylor. But not tonight, no. Here is your winner, the Samurai, Katsuyori Elizabeth. She's feeling proud and for a damn good reason defeating a veteran brawler like Tiger Taylor is not an easy task, but she managed to overcome.
stepping into the red ring next, we have six men entering into a triple threat tornado tag team match. Taking part in this match are the Hunter Bros, Mark and Mac Hunter. The second team is gonna be the Rough Riders, Junkyard Jack and Scorpio Scotty. And the third team, the Season 3 champion, Cutie by Cook, and the men's internet champion, the Queen Jackie Jackson, the Queen's team. Bros got some moves tonight. The following contest is a triple threat tornado tag team match. On the way to the ring, at a combined weight of 398 pounds, the Hype Bros. One of the best tag teams here in the Pro Masters. Reigning undefeated cha tag team champions, wrestling alliance champions in the second season, Mark and Andrea Smack Hunter, a high flying duo with their own peculiar style, but still lots of good teamwork and definitely what the uh, tag teaming is all about here in the Pro Masters. So glad that these two are back in, in full form and. Yeah, as a full team. And both of them seem to be very, very much enjoying it. Yeah, the duo got some very good moves going on tonight. I just hope that the, uh, the, it's just not da dancing. That the two, two are set to go. They, had a, they have a match coming up and it's gonna be one tough match. Considering who they're up against. Here comes Scorpio Scotty and Junkyard Jack, two survivors of the apocalyptic Badlands. Definitely one team that took to, the, took to this season of the Pro Masters with a storm. Managed with the high pick. good things from them, very good things. They are so close to getting getting to that wrestling alliance championship match, but not quite there, not quite enough. But a victory here could ensure them another op uh, position at that. Meanwhile, the third team to enter this fight at a combined weight of 417 pounds. The the most beloved duo in the men's, div uh, the men's division, Cutie Pie Cook and Jackie Jackson, the season 3 champion and internet champion of the men's division. Jackie, of course, this Sunday will be facing off against Flyboy to defend his title. As was decided earlier tonight. Nonetheless, Jackie still gets to pick, pick a match, of his, uh, match stipulation of his choosing. But at least he has that advantage coming up, so he... But he, still, he better not strain himself too much in this match. Then again, that would be much to ask for as Tornado Tag Team rules. Full-on applying this full-on chaotic six-man competition is already on. Both of the queens going after Mark Hunter, Vival. Jack going after Mac. Oh, brain buster there from Jackie Jackson starting off. And lines, lines up an elbow to the chest as well. Yeah, Jack and Andrea Smack Hunter and Cutie by Cook now sitting up against Scorpio Scotty. The two have faced off previously. They do have tested their medal when it comes to submission holds. Oh, well, Cutie by going already for the cover, only a one count. Jackie going for the cover as well. Mark Hunter being pinned. 
didn't even get to one because referee took so long and Jack was at uh, uh, yeah Junkyard Jack was there to break it up immediately or referee can instruct there cutie by Tekia Scorpio Scotty Mark Tekia Jackie Jackson the two have uh, have some history between be fighting one another Mark and Jackie have met inside the ring here comes Mark missing with the leg drop unfortunate for him as Jackie's gonna be definitely giving him a more continued punishment on that beautiful drop kick from Andreas and Jackie with uh, some kind of submission hold couldn't see from this angle what it was but he was definitely holding down cutie by going for the cover but Mac there to break it up and now yeah, getting the wrath of the fanboy as the three three teams now fighting in singular Jack, uh, Junkyard Jack, Cutie Pie Cook and Andreas Mac Hunter Mac sent outside so leaving only Cutie Pie and Jack there who don't do anything all rolls outside and Cutie Pie following up okay everyone has left the ring now the match has to end inside the ring via pin followers to be some meanwhile Going around the aisle next to the ramp, Jackie Jackson and Mark Hunter. Mark gets sent back inside. Scorpio Scotty there to pick up the pieces. Lifting up. No oh, DDT from the grounded position. And Jackie looks like he's gonna be gonna be coming to aid. No, gonna go inside the ring. Breaks. No, doesn't break the pin. Just runs around. Scorpio Scotty almost getting a freak out against Mark, but not quite there yet. Oh, and Jackie there, come to aid his tag team partner, Cutie by Kuka. Yeah, the Queens have absolutely remarkable team spirit. It's um, almost enviable uh, to the point they're always looking out for one another, and that's exactly what's necessary to finish this competition, or maybe not. Scorpio Scotty with a Scorpio death block. Submission hold applied to Mark Hunter. Jackie Jackson comes in and comes out. Does it break up the hold there instead? Let's mark eat it up as much as possible. Stops on the left to act and goes for the cover. Wait a minute, using the middle rope as leverage. The referee caught it. Forcing the separation there as Mark is now being picked up. He's been, well, I would say this is bullying him, but you know, it's fight. Uh, in between, when, when the bell rings and the bell stops, uh, rings again. In between those two intervals, everything goes and it's not a, it's a full on fight. Speaking of bullying on the ringside. Mac and Jack going up against Cutie Pie Cook. Yeah, double teaming. And Mark is able to turn things around at least momentarily inside the ring. Scorpio Scotty slammed down. Mark lifted up by Jackie and slammed down himself. Yeah, uh, Scotty to pick up the pieces. Jack preventing a pinfall. Oh, and he's getting mad about that. Fisherman Brainbuster from the Queen delivered straight to the Hunter. Uh, and speaking of, yeah, the Hunters aren't looking that good right now as both of them are getting uh, taken care down on the ringside. Mac eating up a good amount of damage. Oh, another Brain Buster there. Oh, Mac sent back inside the ring. Jack and Cutie by continuing this fight one on one. Mono y mano. And Jack, Jackie going for pinfall. Securing no kicks out. Mark Hunter kicking out before a free count. Scotty taking Jack out of the ring. Uh, Jack, I mean Mac. There are too many people with a similar kind of name, you know? Same sounding names. Mark trying to set Jackie up somewhere. Cutie by lifting up Jack. Drops it down with a suplex. And Scorpio Scotty gonna be locking up. Oh, almost succeeding with the future shock. But Mark there to break it up. And a lot Scotty to get things under control. Jack, your Jack gonna be slamming down there. Yes, um, oh, I'm blanking out. What was it called? I, I remember it uh, previously, but... Sunset uh, uh, Flip Power Bomb, yeah, that's what it was. I'm sorry. I'm being very professional as usual. Basement drop kick to the back of the head of Mark, and Mac is back inside the ring here to fight Scorpio Scotty, or get it picked up by Scorpio Scotty. Mark sending Jackie into the corner. Looking for an opportunity here, coming in. We have a Scorpio Scotty getting pinned against Mac. Only a two count. Get Cutie Pie getting locked up. Future shock into the cover. Cutie Pie down. Mark breaks it up. That could have be a three count right there. Mark lifted up and laid down with a court buster. Jack catching hold of Mac, sending him into the corner. Kick gets caught. Jack sent into the corner. Mac looking to smash the face against the turnbuckle. 
but here comes Cutie, uh, here comes the Queen, Jackie Jackson, getting elbowed again, turning around, Mark aiding his brother, beautiful jumping neck breaker, taking down Jackie Jackson, and um, with that, Mac is able to go and drop down Jack, and yeah, there's like M Mark, Jack, Mac, Jackie, oh, and there we go, the cutter from Junkyard Jack, Two and kick out by Cutie Pie, not done yet. Both of the queens are down. Mark going for the pinfall against Jackie. There we go, not even a one count referee taking way too long on that one. Yeah, absolutely. It's just bodies flying all across the ring and the ringside. Scorpius Scotty waiting for Mac to get back up to his feet and Jackie Jackson lifting up Mark. Power bomb into an alley oop. Cutie by going for the cover against Junkyard Jack, kick out, not even a one count. And he was right on it as well, the referee was right on it. Mark taken down. The, que que the queens are dominating inside the ring. Lifting up Mark here into a vertical suplex. Parading him around and for a good reason, that's an incredible amount of strength right there at works here. Drops down. Mark and Jack, Jackie, the only two men left inside the ring, and Mark lifted up, the Queen suplex connecting, keeps the bridge, we have two count, and three, the Queens once again, pick up a victory against the Hunter brothers of all the people, Jackie Jackson, a cutie by Cook, absolutely dominating tonight, so the replays there, there was so much action going on, and it was all high action, Nonetheless, a fantastic victory for Jackie Jackson, cutie by Cook. Taking the opportunity and utilizing it to secure themselves. Yet another great position. This is definitely a tag team that the champions should be looking out for. Next up is gonna be a bit of a mystery fight, as we do not know who the second participant is. All we know is that someone attacked Martha Baker last Sunday, and they have accepted a one-on-one -on -one match invite from Martha Baker to set, uh, to set things straight, set the record straight, and Martha hopefully getting some payback, I do not know, but we'll find out uh, right now. Quite an eventful season for Martha Baker, as once again she is finding herself in a heap of trouble. Attacked by an un uh, un unknown, mysterious assailant last Sunday. Now getting into a match with them. Real curious on who would have beef going on with Martha Baker right now. After all, the new foundation situation pretty much was cleared away. The new foundation pick up the victory as summer for also. Whatever this is, this is something else entirely, maybe. Oh no, that's the new foundation team. They are they, you're telling me that they're actually back. Wait a minute, there's a third member. And representing the new foundation. From Birmingham, England, Kelly Baker! Well, that was... Kelly Baker. So, so you mean to tell me that it was Kelly? Who, who last, last Sunday attacked 
Mar fight the ring. I see that the new foundation of uh, go, gonna dress up. Uh, yeah, completely new new style of outfits. I mean, I'm liking it, but yeah, that's. Yeah, I think it, it it might have been Kelly. I mean, she's having that same kind of color scheme that the, that the attacker did. That she was the one to come up to this match. So, but why would she go and turn on her mother like this? And why would she uh, join up with the new foundation of all people after all they've been the ones who've been opposing the Bakers ever since? Uh, uh, well, not uh, well ever since season uh, four started. Another 3D Kelly, like one of their own, at least. And I was. For that matter. I can see Mar Marpa for sure, but she looks. She seems a bit shocked that. I cannot blame her. I'm in a complete shock too, so. Her being in shock. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it. That's Kelly. Just what is going on? So this doesn't even seem like a recruitment drive or anything. This seems like she's a full, full on member right now. All right, and the competitors set to go. And I suppose it's now official. We actually do have a mother versus daughter situation here. Marfa Baker versus Kelly Baker. Not something I would have expected uh, at, the, at the start of season four, but here we are. And uh, that that does beg the question. Why, why, why in the world would... Kelly abandon her matter and well abandon is one thing full on turning turncoat is another oh and Anna Cross running here for some reason as well and Amaya creates oh as Kelly is sent into the steel steps nothing they can do that would uh, that would help the situation unless they they're hoping for a disqualification this is still an officially sanctioned match so. Yeah, but what would make Kelly Kelly tur turn? I mean, yeah, there, there there's been so, some disturbance uh, in between the two. Uh, Ke Kelly, after all, when she debuted, uh, she got immediately sucked into this situation that was going on between New, New Foundation and the Bakers. Or rather, with Martha Baker that then dragged, Ke dragged Kelly into this. Almost getting a full-on count out there, but both of them making their, their way back inside the ring. Wrestling takedown. From Marfa dropping her daughter down on the floor there and now setting up a colossal clutch, sticking those fingers straight into the face and trying to get a submission victory that way. Kelly picking the leg and turn, able to turn it around. Yeah, there, there, there are piece of disagreements on how, how they sh the duo should be taking care of Amaya and Anna. Kelly wanted to go for a full on aggression, full on offensive tactics as possible to take down the situation. Here comes Samaya and Anna again to oversteer the situation. Kelly's oh drops the knee to the face. Meanwhile, Marfa wanted to go for a more more peaceful solution, more controlled for the, the most of it. And Sekiri straight to the back of the head. Even so, that that should be I, I mean for some people that would be already plenty enough reason to change tactics, but for Kelly to abandon. To backstab her mother and to join the enemy here, there, there has to be something more going on in the background here that has not been revealed yet. I, I'll try to get a word in from the new foundation, uh, preferably from Kelly as soon as possible. But for now, for now, we'll just have to hope and see whether or not. Uh, well, I doubt this match is going to be giving us any answers whatsoever. This is just a beatdown between the two of them. And at this point, I would like to give a disclaimer. Oh, beautiful reversal there from Kelly. Able to turn this around and avoid the Whipper Snapper. As now she's sending her mother now into the corner. Yeah. Uh, full of uh, disclaimer that 
Brawlmasters does not condone corporal punishment, and what you're witnessing right now is not corporal punishment. Oh, there it goes, the jawbreaker. Not corporal punishment in any form. These are two f willing and consenting adults taking part in a combat sport that, that is regulated, that has rules. And there we go, Kelly looking up. The bubblegum stretcher using it against her own mother here. Marfa able to pick it off and with punches liberate herself from the hold. Kelly's finishing maneuver right after that jawbreaker. So, you know, lifted up in an electric chair. Kelly trying to get her situation. Oh, able to turn it into a hurricane Rana. Good for strikes here as the fight between the Bakers continue. Marfa sent over the top rope and there, there's the new foundation. Amaya giving some orderings on. At least it looks like she was telling Anna to step away and let Kelly handle this double stomp. Straight to the chest there. Another double stomp misses. Marfa able to roll through but gets kicked and Anna really, she's really looking to get into this fight. I don't well, know why. As Kelly is lifted up, powerbomb position again, and now slammed against the apron. Oh, gonna be coming around again. Double whammy. Drops the elbow, and now punching the kneecap as we are getting it to a six count. Yeah, does it seem, yeah, talking about the, how the fight is going, Marfa Baker, does it seem like she, she was one bit surprised that it was Kelly who attacked her Sunday, considering how, how readily she, she is in this match, how, how much... She's giving out like she's fighting out as if it was her life on the line here. Tor Torgi the leg and now going for the cover. We have one, we have two and kick out by Kelly holding still strong in this fight. I wouldn't have imagined we we'd be getting to see a fight like, like this. Not to mention in a situation like this. But here we are. Once again this is the show where the unexpected happens. Locked up here, lifted up, power bomb, sit out style. Kelly dropped right onto her back. And Marfa now looking to finish off Kelly for good here, trying to get her out of this match. Lifted up, clam slam in, coming and drop down. Rolls up with the leg and going for cover. Here we have one, we have two, and we have a no shoulder up. Beating the freak out, Kelly Baker able to get the shoulder up. Right before a freak out, Marfa now looking to finish off Kelly as she climbs to the top rope. Here she comes, but Kelly able to catch her mid flight. Power slams her down. Setting up here. Jawbreaker. The Bubblegum Princess special and going for the cover now. In the center of the ring, we have one, we have two, and Marfa Baker kicking out. The fight still continuing on. Kelly now looking to finish off her own mother. Misses the kick as Marfa now waist lock take down in the center of the ring. Kelly trying to get hold of herself. Trying to grasp for breath. Whipper snapper. And Marfa going for the cover. But here's Anna coming in. Breaks up the pinfall. Catching hold of Marfa, what is he doing? She's turning her around, what is... Well, I don't know... What that was about. Why would Anna come in here and interrupt that match? But with, with that, it's a disqualification victory for Marfa. But it, yeah, it definitely seems like there's so, something more going on here that meets the eye. I'll... As I said, I'll try to get a word in from the new foundation after the show is over tonight. But for now, we gotta move on with the show and get on to the next match. The eighth match of the night is gonna be a five-woman Helena Cell match, and this is for the Women's Internet Championship. Taking part in this match, 
there's the defending champion on Teresa who's challenged by five people, uh, four people, my, my apologies, four people challenging for the title. Ashley Woodward, Matt Doc Whitney, VR Harvey and Diane Van Damme. The following contest is a fatal five-way Hell in a Cell match and is for the Women's Internet Championship. Introducing the challenger from the edge of reality, Harper Ashley Woodward. Yes, as previously stated tonight, during the men's number one contender match, the Internet Championship is a title that will be held defendable during every episode, alternating between the men's and the women's titles. Since Sunday is going to be the men's title defense, tonight it means tonight is going to be the women's title, and four people have signed up and are eligible for this title matchup. Ashley Woodward, one of them, really excited to go into this match, as I assume a gladiator like her knows exactly how to fight inside a cell like this. Representing the natural disasters from wherever she wants. Mad Dog Whitney. Now, Mad Dog Whitney, of course, real happy to, to get to this kind of opportunity. I would have assumed that fighting in a, inside a uh, cage would be something she's real familiar with. I mean, potentially, I don't know. That sounds kind of fucked up, I know, but still, I, I feel like this should be something in her early. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Nonetheless, Matt Doc Whitney, one of the season of veteran brawlers, I, I feel so wrong saying that, considering her track record, but hey, she, she is what she is, and she is one joy to watch. Speaking of joys, here comes a very, very interesting, a very popular and very hype up character. Yeah, could you imagine a gamer girl winning the internet championship? That would be, that would be totally like it was made for her. But she cannot prove herself, and I see that she, she has got, done done a complete makeover since the last time we saw her, and she's got a new VR headset on. I like it. It's it's making it's very ooh woo, -woo if you will. Pretty sure I just uh, got rid of half my audience with that one, but hey. The show is what it is. If you don't like it, then beat it. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna get, get back to Axel. A neutral, a neutral round here as we have next up coming up the champion herself, the women's internet champion here in the Brawl Masters from Bogota, Colombia. She is the women's internet champion. Crazy. Psycho, Teresa. Yeah, Teresa was one of the people who were grumbling about uh, how there's not enough uh, presence with the Internet Championship. So hey, here, here, here's that exactly what she wanted. A title opportunity and lots of people watching and lots of people wanted to take part in it. This is not out of spite, this, uh, this is not snow made out of spite, but uh, it, it, we, the intention, the full-on intention, is to spice things up. With Internet Championship, they're, they're, we're gonna be applying special rulings. Number one, that you, you don't need, need a clause for it, instead anyone can challenge it at any time, considering you have to defend it at least once a week, so... And Diane Van Damme, the fifth person to enter into this fight. And the fourth challenger. From the Netherlands, wonderful Diane Van Damme! Yeah, going, going back to talk a bit, bit more about the rulings for the, for the internet title, the champion still has the 
defender's advantage, the champion's defending advantage, meaning that they still get to choose the situation. Or Teresa wanted a hell in a cell fight in this case. So yeah, this would be something completely next level. Talk about an opportunity for Diane Van Damme. She missed her opportunity at Summer Pro to get the Grand Prix title, but now the opportunity to get the Women's Internet Championship title. Our Pro Masters belt here. Very, very nice, very nice style here. And there it is. The prize everyone is aiming for. But only one of these people can get it and Remains to be seen whether or not it's gonna be re uh, our champion retaining. Remains to be seen. We, that could be a very interesting uh, situation. Uh, of course, as per the season four championship match rules goes, the uh, the winning of the winner of the championship match gets the gets two points. That's one point doubled, except for the, the, a defending champion. If they manage to retain against multiple opponents, they get a point for each. Ad additional opponent plus uh, uh, not plus but that, that is then multiplied by two so should Aunt Teresa actually be able to pick up a victory here she is talking about an eight eight point addition to her scorecard and that would put her in a clear lead in, in the ranking she, she would get the number one position currently held by William Stiles the men's Grand Prix champion who who is expected to make a appearance uh, in the next match uh, uh, that, that's uh, at least what I'm expecting and everyone else is expecting after all uh, the demon king and now the rated R champion in the men's division eraser gave him a very strict uh, well not a very strict well some could cut it strict but uh, I'll call it a reasonable a reasonable condition that if he wants to team up with him he has to give the answer uh, by Thursday night, so you know tonight is the time he needs to get the conclusion and we will talk about that match coming up uh, soon enough, no doubt about that, but yeah, everyone is waiting to see what, what, what William will be choosing will he actually join up with the Demon King, or is he gonna continue as a solitary competitor uh, but enough about that, let's focus on the match here. Beautiful springboard action by Aunt Teresa. Taking down VR Harvey who gets back up to her feet, but once again dropped down there by... Dropped down by the defending champion, Hairpool Match Slam. And now take a bit of momentum, no, gets caught. Meanwhile, we have a trio fight going on. Ashley, Matt Doc, Whitney and Diane Van Damme. Each wanting a piece out of each other. Uh, that, that's just the ca chaotic nature of a Fatal 5-way match. Harvey sent outside by the champion, the champion following. Interesting choice, after all. The match has to conclude inside the ring. Not inside the head cell, but inside the ring specifically. Pinfall or submission, one of those ways, or a knockout by submission. I suppose that, that is covered by a submission. Weapons are allowed if, if anyone is willing. There's a good selection of them underneath the ring just for this match. Diane sent, slammed down by Matt Doc Whitney, kicking the back now. And Teresa, the defending champion, going for the cover. Two count already and kick out by VR Harvey. Something right under the arm as the champion now looking. Big maneuver, drops the leg drop and does it, did it have nearly enough light for that one. Harvey now drops down with a DDT. The champion right in the center of the ring getting the arm thrust. Diane sent outside by Mad Dog who's gonna be pursuing her. Ashley Woodward coming also on the ringside. She has recovered herself and is back on action as the trio now <laughs> fight one another in a full on chaotic situation. Not a lot of room to fight there. Ashley sent against the wall of the uh, gates of the cell here. And Diane following, no, she actually is stopping her. Meanwhile, inside the ring, plus body from the champion. We are Harvey dropped down. Time into the top. 
a leg drop from the heavens. Going for the cover and trying to retain. Two count and three on Teresa. Those, they, well, I cannot say unimaginable, but I honestly expected the fight to go on for a lot, lot longer. But the trio, Matt Dog, Whitney, Diane Van Damme and Ashley Woodward just focusing way too much on one another. And that resulted not only in on Teresa retaining and getting a huge victory, but also getting the aforementioned 8 points to her scorecard according to the season 4 rulings Here is your winner and still women's internet champion crazy psycho Teresa Yeah not an outcome many were expecting I definitely wasn't expecting the champion to be re retaining against four other opponents but she was able to play the situation. She saw an opportunity to end the match quickly, not prolong it, and with that secure the belt and secure herself a very sweet victory. Here is our current number one ranking brawler on Teresa. And she's gonna be defending that title again next week against... Well, we'll see who we, who's willing to go up against her next week. But now it's time for the main event. Our main event of tonight is going to be a one-on-one -on -one Extreme Rules fight and this will be for the men's Rated R Championship title. The current champion Demon King Eraser has personally invited Motorman Max into this fight. The following contest is an Extreme Rules match and is for the men's Rated R. The Demon King has laid out a very, ex uh, very excellent trap here, a very excellent bait here. One irresistible for the likes of Motorman Max. I mean, of, co of course, a title opportunity is a title opportunity, but a huge opportunity would, would it be for Motorman Max to get himself a title, but still. He, he, I, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that he knows that it, this is all a laid out trap, but I suppose that just shows confidence. Him, him thinking that William will uh, eagerly be choosing his side, or at least not going to be choosing the Demon King's side in this fight, uh, if, if he's even going to be making an appearance, you know? In any case, inside the ring, it's all that matters. Then, Motor Man, very excited. This match could definitely go either way around. I would be uh, uh, cashing in any victories before the demon is down for good. The man already proved himself quite dangerous by taking down General George to earn this title and now flaunting it around must speak of confidence there he is carrying that belt and what an excellent, excellent bait it has made. The moment of truth is right upon us. Will, William Styles choose to, do, uh, choose to go, choose to serve the Demon King, or is he gonna be sticking up to the man, or, or well, not actually the man, to the robot that helped him get to the Grand Prix title? There are, there are maniacal plots going on in the backstage. Introducing the challenger 
from the Machine Age. Weighing in at 287 pounds, the Motor Man. And introducing the champion from the pits of hell. Weighing in at 235 pounds, he is the men's rated R champion, Demon King E. Razor. All eyes on this fight for more reasons than one. Whether you're here for the championship fight, whether or not he here to see William Styles make a two choice. The main event definitely has everyone's attention going on. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The bell has rung and the main event championship fight is on. This one for the men's rated R title. As Demon King Eraser is defending against Motorman Max here. Setting up a single leg camo clutch already, hoping for an early submission potentially, maybe. Oh, gets slammed down. Yeah, Motorman Max actually invited to take part in this match by the Demon King. And yeah, that's of course immense opportunity for him. Not only to earn a victory as he's going for right now, only a one count. Not only to earn a victory in a championship fight, but also get himself a championship title defend. Which will open up a whole set of new opportunities for him. Know that about it, both these veteran brawlers are going to be giving everything they have in this fight. To try and secure the title as Iron Claw is going to be locked in here. Right, targeting right into the shoulder, the nervous system of the body. Oh, but the Demon King able to... Take the opportunity and drop down Motorman with Motorman retaliating Jawbreaker and gets back up to his feet. But the Demon King now reverses himself. But oh, gets sent into the steel post. Yeah, mo more importantly than the title tonight. Tonight is also. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be getting an answer to the, to the burning question of whether or not William Styles is going to be coming out here. Uh, if you remember from last week, right after the summer brawl. The Demon King congratulated the new Grand Prix champion and offered him a place at his side. Place serving under him, under him and replacing Thunderstorm Andre, the previous Grand Prix champion. Uh, the ultimatum was that he would get back to him within a week's time. So tonight is the deadline. He would have to pledge his loyalty to the Demon King. Who's now gonna go for the Demon Nail Slash right across the chest of Motorman Max. Attacking the back and sending him into the utter corner now. Kicks him down to the bottom turnbuckle and multiple stomps. Taking out his fury right on. And here comes the Grand Prix Champion or he should be coming but I don't see him anywhere. Yeah he's confused. Demon King is actually confused here. Where is he? Oh, behind! Eraser, behind you! Oh! The Demon King able to get the situation going on his end, lifting up the Grand Prix Champion, who's now fighting back. Remember, extreme rules, so the yeah, other referee saw that. It, it does not, it's not close for a disqualification. Demon King trying to run pursuit. But I suppose William Stars has escaped that for now. Oh, smacking. Meanwhile, Motorman getting the table and smacking it right across the champion's face. Oh man, already giving the fans what they want. The fans want a new champion tonight and they could be potentially uh, getting one. After all that distraction run by William Stars definitely gave Motorman some time to recuperate and turn things around. Going for strikes here. Lining up. Big close line. Goes for the cover, we could be getting a new champion, no, not even a one count, before a kick out. The Demon King now being picked up here. Caught hold. The Demon King able to get hold of the motorman and send him into the corner now. Looking up and scraping the face, the face plates at least. With that elbow and with that bone armor. Going for stomps. 
multiple ones in fact. Not showing any mercy whatsoever. Rolls up the leg and goes for the cover. Here we have one, two. Kick out by the motor man. Still holding on to this championship fight. But for how much longer as he just got a whole 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 beat down. The Demon King with a sledgehammer but gets a gold breaker. Motorman hoping to get the victory here. We have one, we have two count. And kick out there by the champion. Not about to be done just in. Being picked up here by Motorman Max. Caught back. Lifted up. Super atomic drop. And trying to get the crowd cheering on him, his side. Yeah, he's, he's prepared to be going far and defending. Dropping the sledgehammer to the face. But e Demon King back on top. Close line from hell. Rolls up with the leg. The champion is gonna be retaining. No, shoulder up. Motorman getting the shoulder up. Incredible, absolutely incredible. But then again, I suppose Motorman has no soul, so... I mean, I don't think he has a soul. He's a robot, so why would he have a soul? Being paraded around. But that will be costing the champion as the Motorman Max now. Able to separate himself. No, he... It looked like he sat down. He wasn't responding. Oh, there we go with a response. A bit of delay, but the elbow hitting to the face. Oh, Eraser rolls through. Lifted up. Beautiful slam. And now going for the cover. Shoulders are down. We have one and a kick out. He will need to bring up a whole another gear of assault here. Oh, and definitely did with the sledgehammer. Another one. Driving it down multiple times. Another and another. Motorman able to get back. Gets the sledgehammer to his side. Oh, and drives it straight to the face and to the leg. I know you had an extreme rules fight, but I believe that this is more than an eraser bargain for clothesline again. Picking up the challenger here and the clothesline from hell a third time into the cover. Sure, we have a winner here and free. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. The champion stands tall despite the momentary distraction. Replays here of the match you just saw. Um, the challenger definitely had a good opportunity going, but was not enough to deliver. Well, despite the help of William Styles, Eraser once again showcasing how a true champion does it. Unfortunate for the motorman, but it is the nature of the game. There's always one winner and one loser. What this means for William Styles and Demon King Eraser, we'll find out in the coming weeks. But pretty sure that the battle lines have been drawn now. William has made his choice. And he's going to be opposing the Demon King going forward. How the Demon King will be responding, we will have to find out another time. But for now, uh, this has been the Pro Master. But for now, that will do for tonight's episode of the Pro Masters. I hope you enjoyed the fights tonight. As always, I have been your host, Kupari Parta. This has been Pro Masters, and I'll see you next Sunday for some more brawling action. Good night.